Here we have C2H2 reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So step one, let's get our oxidation numbers in. Hydrogen tends to be plus one. There are two hydrogens, so overall plus two. And that means our carbon, which is normally is in group four, we'd expect it to be plus four. But in this situation, it'll be minus two overall on this side of the molecule. Because there are two carbons, we divide that by two and we get an oxidation number of minus one. Oxygen. Oxygen is in its elemental form. It's uncombined with any other element, so its oxidation state is zero. Coming across here, oxygen is now combined with carbon. Therefore, the oxidation state is minus two. There are two oxygens, therefore overall, minus four. And if you go back to carbon in this situation, minus four, plus four. Which makes sense, considering carbon is in group four. Coming across here, we still have another oxygen to take care of. Oxidation state is minus two. And finally, with hydrogen, there are two of them. So this side must be plus two. And as expected, hydrogen is plus one. We've got our oxidation numbers. Our next step is to work out what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. If we draw our line from carbon to carbon. Now we've got to bear in mind we are looking at the oxidation number of one carbon, not two. So minus one to plus four, we have lost electrons, we have become more positive. So if carbon has lost electrons, uh, oil rig as a reminder, oxidation is loss of electrons, therefore this has been oxidized. And in brackets I'm going to make a note that we have lost five electrons to go from minus one to plus four. Hydrogen, plus one, plus one. So again, we'll make a note that hydrogen it has remained unchanged. As a result, it is our spectator ion, H plus. It's, there is no change. And finally, oxygen has gone from an oxidation state of zero to minus two. And we should also be aware that there is an oxygen over here, which is minus two. That signifies a, a gain of electrons, which we know is reduction. And in fact, two electrons per oxygen. Next step, our half equations. We need to rewrite each equation. So the first one we'll look at is carbon. Altogether we have, on this side of the equation, two carbons times by two. That gives us four carbons. And notice they have a charge of minus one. Coming across, those carbons end up as carbon four plus ions. And there are four of them. Having a look, we could either subtract five electrons from this side, or we could subtract five electrons from the other side. This is where a lot of people in uh, the GCSE will get confused, and they often drop marks, because we need to take into account the number of carbon ions we are talking about. If each carbon loses five electrons, and we have four carbon ions, then altogether there is a transfer of 20 electrons, four times by five electrons each. So hopefully it's quite clear, we need to add 20 electrons to carbon four plus, four of them, to make four carbon minus. If we look at the oxygen, we start with five O2s. And we end up making oxygen two minus ions on this side. And if we calculate how many we have, there are two oxygens in a carbon dioxide molecule. 
We have four molecules, therefore there are eight oxygen ions. But we must also add on the two extra from here. All in all, ten oxide ions. And again, if each oxygen ion has lost or has gained two electrons, altogether we have ten of them. That gives us twenty electrons. Those are the half equations. Uh, you notice we've ignored the hydrogen because it is spectating, it's not involved. And the final step is to combine the two of these into our ionic equation. And again, if we combine these, we can see that the 20 electrons on either side cancel out, leaving us with four carbon minuses plus five oxygen. 4 carbon 4 plus and 10 oxygen 2 minus.